Hey, what's up you amazing hackers? I hope you're all doing well today. Welcome back to the channel. So today I would like to go over a question that I've been asked many times before, but it seems hard to conclusively answer this because there are just so many options out there. Uncle Red, what is the best bug bounty target? Well, first of all, that is not easy to do. So picking a good bug bounty target is gonna take time, is going to take effort, just like your bug hunt itself. It's going to, well, you're going to have to have some resolve because you're going to be testing a target and it's gonna suck for a long time. But you're gonna be wondering, should I stick with this target? Should I not stick with this target? Should I get a new one? Uh, like, the problem is, on one hand, that there are just way too many targets out there. And on the other hand, that people also just don't really have an idea of what targets are, like what the different types of targets are. Imagine that you're going to the shops and you're gonna buy a freaking drone, right? So what specifications do you look out for? Without doing any research beforehand, of course, is what I'm talking about. So you just go blindly into a store, what specifications matter? I mean, you can probably think of a few, but if you think about FPV drones with FPV goggles, that's a different story already. That's a, a lot more difficult. It's the same for bug bounty targets. And the thing is, you're not just grabbing a drone. There are different types of drones. There are agricultural drones. There are drones to drop off your load. So the same with bug bounty targets. There's business to business targets. There are business to consumer targets. And then you also have the, um, how do you put this, like the, for example, a newspaper website, uh, you have your um, blog, you have your social media websites, but you also have your HR applications, your CRM applications, and which ones of those you pick are partially going to determine your success. Because what I would avoid in the beginning is I would avoid things with a high out. Those are usually more secure. The thing is, if you are able to put a smack of money on the table without thinking, or maybe with thinking, you're gonna think about security first. Like, okay, I'm not gonna pay you for nothing, you know, you're gonna have to find me something really incredible before I'm going to pay you that amount of money. And you see all of these big amounts that are smacked on the table, like, I don't know, maybe 10, 15, 20,000 euros. Avoid those, it's just not good in the beginning. I would go for vulnerability disclosure programs because you'll have a bit less competition. On the other hand, you'll also have more competition of the people who think I'm not good enough to hack a paid target yet. And there are, of course, many different types of paid targets that you can try to hack. Try to go for that lower range a little bit. Try to go for maybe zero for a low vulnerability to 1,000, 2,500 euros for any medium vulnerabilities. Try to focus on those things as you go along. Try to also go for business to business because usually you'll find more logic there. And what is number one in the OSP top 10? Right, broken access control. So that's a big one that you can look for if you have the proper logic within your application, meaning if you have the proper access controls within your application. So a couple of big things that you can already immediately look for in bug bounty targets. Another one that you can like, that makes me say I'm not gonna hack in it at all as a bank. Why not? Because banks usually require you to be a customer there. And I don't wanna become a customer at every major bank in Belgium, you know? And that's just in Belgium. If I go outside of Belgium, I usually can't even become a customer and stuff like that. It gets complicated very fast. So anything that's uh, like financial in terms of crypto, that's a different story. Those are usually just web applications and they like, honestly, things with crypto, sometimes they're a bit more secure, but usually not to the extent of a KBC bank in Belgium, for example, who are very, very secure or a Belgian is in Belgium because they all encrypt their own traffic very, very securely with their mobile apps and stuff like that. So you can make some, th there are some things to be said about that. Don't go for mobile targets in the beginning. I wouldn't. Mobile is just not a great idea. The thing with mobile is that you have mobile specific vulnerabilities and you also have communication specific vulnerabilities between the mobile platform and different APIs that it uses. 
So mobile, I would just avoid it in the beginning, you know, try to go for a lower level, maybe a few hundred bucks web target, and then try to see what you can find, but stick on it if you like it, you know, just, oh, I like this target a little bit, then make sure that you test everything, and everything is a lot, I know, it's, you're gonna tell me, Uncle Red, I can't test everything, why not? Like, of course, I know that you can't, possibly go over every single edge case but you can test every single parameter for sql injection broker access control cross-site scripting there's many different things that you can test all of these different uh, parameters for so there's definitely scope enough and then i didn't even talk about the logic yet the access control logic is one of the big ones because broken access control is like a this disgustingly prevalent in the wild and it's not that it's like in the super obvious things it's usually going to be a second order idler or it's going to be something where you have a specific group that has rights on it with users that belong to that group that have their own user rights and a combination of those two rights is going to give some kind of weird result so I hope these tips kind of help you already on where to start with bug bounty targets. As for bug bounty platforms, in the beginning, I would stick with integrity for the very simple reason that you don't get any negative karma, like on HackerOne, for example, if you report something that doesn't turn out to be valid. And I also think integrity does provide a hell of a lot of value back to the community. So I'll shout them out at every chance that I can. Thank you so much for watching. If you have a question or if you want more tips yourself, feel free to leave me a comment because they often give me inspiration for videos like this. Thanks a lot, Amazing Hacker. Really appreciate it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, Amazing Hackers.